<clears throat> okay guys, so we're going to talk today about the new ERS, ETS, the criteria for reading PFT, uh, which is a little bit different from the old one, which last one was published in 2005. So to start with, I'll talk about the PFT in general. It's, uh, it's kind of a procedure or a test we do it with a patient, just to check the physiological of the lung function. It's not a diagnostic test at, uh, by itself. It can just only help with the diagnosis, plus all the criteria for imaging and uh, clinical finding in any patient. So how the ATS-ERS collect their information? Uh, they collect all the database, which is done from 1947 to 2019, uh, different uh, database, midline, and uh, other ones. So pulmonary function test, there's the three parts, as you know, guys, spirometry, diffusion capacity, and uh, lung volume. So major difference we start with between the ATS 2005 and uh, the new one is the database. So it's the, the population we are comparing to. So 2005 uh, ATS ERS, they use the NHANESS third, survey uh, for the patient, but the new one, they use the GLI. Uh, major difference between both of them is the extreme of age. So the NHES, they contain the people from age 8 to 80, but the GLI is more like three years up to 95 year old. So GLI contain the NHES, so it's more uh, wider. And the number of patients was more in the GLI. GLI more, yeah. So which the patient uh, they aim to use in the GLI, the Global Function Initiative. So they use the population, healthy population, they never smoke without any previous history of any respiratory disease. Uh, typically, when you have a patient and you do the spirometry or the lung function test, you have to insert the high and the age and the sex of the patient. And the GLI also contain four ethnicity group. They contain the white uh, American or the white Caucasian group, uh, African American black group, and there's the South Asia and the East Asia. And there's the fifth group is like combination uh, between all the four groups. So for the Middle East and North African, they can be on the white Caucasian. So some stuff uh, we have to look up uh, when also we are looking for a patient. So they notice also their body proportion between the population. So everyone is different than the other. Even if the patients have the same height, uh, those patients are different from the trunk size or like above the waist size. So this proportion between the leg length or the trunk. Uh, the other also important uh, things about the sex uh, for the gender identity, so we have to use the biological gender, not the gender identity. And also it's uh, important things uh, for transgender when they also use the hormone replacement therapy. So it can affect the lung function. If they use the hormone during the young age or adult science, it also they affect the uh, lung uh, growth. As we said, the four population, uh, this is the, the table which contains the white, black, South Asian, and North Asian. Uh, special consideration uh, for the DLCO uh, value require usually to adjust uh, the equipment, the data space, and the uh, parametric pressure attitude when you do it. And any change in hemoglobin, carboxyhemoglobin, and the carbon uh, monoxide uh, back pressure also can affect the reading for the DLC. Those especially important for the people with the closed monitoring. If you have any medication can affect the DLCO, especially the chemotherapy. So you have to be worried about the hemoglobin, the carboxyhemoglobin. Uh, 
for the lung volume special consideration uh, in general uh, so in general the obesity can affect uh, the lung volume uh, mainly in the function residual capacity and the expiratory reverse volume especially with people bmi above <laughs> especially with people BMI above uh, 30. Um, and the total lung capacity usually did not define or reduce in the test unless the BMI above 40. This is a quick question uh, mm -hmm. for the GLI at Enhance. So the GLI, was it done for the spirometry lung volumes and DLCO or was done for- Just the only the spirometry. That's right. So when we go for like a data, you can go with a spirometry and DLCO was done in the GLI for uh -huh. the lung volume. Volume volume now. Enhance. Right. So when like if we change our software, it will say it's like spirometry and DLCO with GLI and lung volumes with enhance. Yeah. But they are trying to put the lung volume as well now. But it's right. Like I will talk about that. Yeah. This is all you guys know it. That's just a baseline. Start with. Uh, so when we read any PFT, we have to put the reference uh, for equation and the index. Uh, so it's, it's different when you read any uh, PFT from different players. You have to put you refer what you read it, which one criteria GLI or an edge. So when you read any PFT, there is a quality criteria for acceptability and usability. Uh, when I read about it, uh, to be honest, I'm not pretty sure about this uh, information, but it will not affect the results. You will read it at that, but you have to refer it that this patient have grade like A to F, and you're gonna say like how much accessibility or usability for this patient. We can go over it one by one. So for the criteria accessibility, so they must have PEV less than 5% or FVC, uh, or like uh, 0.1 liter. Do you know anybody know what's the PEV? What? Uh, like extrapolated volume when they do the FVC, uh -huh. uh, we can measure how much um, the the his it the I don't want to call it the hesitation. The early part does not count if it's more than five percent yeah. or more than 100 milliliters. It affects it kind of a little bit affects your result. Yes. Yeah, so this is the one here. So it should be if with the start is less, less than 5% from the FVC. But we will be affected if it's abnormal, then it's not usable. It's not usable, but it's not usable. It's not, not just not accepted. Yeah, that's, that's what I think. We go back to the same criteria. Yeah, that's acceptability and usability. usability. So that's not there, that's not mm -hmm. usable yeah. and acceptable. Yeah, it should be less than 5 the other one must have no evidence of so, uh, so that the the yes what you do you just pull it all yeah this is what it's this is why it's, it's, it's called extrapolated extra, extra. now you see the patient starts here this period from here to here this is the this is the, the take off period okay if the takeoff period is not right, then the test has not been done right. How do you know that this takeoff period is right or not right? You just take the most, you see this, this line here? You just take what, what we call the, whatever this is called, you know, it has a name, I don't know what, the, it, I, I don't get the name right now in my mind. But you just pull it down and you differentiate this from the start here. If it is more or less. So the more it is, the more it means he, the patient has hesitated to take off. Okay, make sense? So you just take a line, throw what it's called, uh, it has a name here, this, this line here. Anyway, I, I, I don't recall it. But this is very important because you need to imagine if the patient doesn't, to, the, the most important part is that we need the FAC, we need other numbers, but the FAV1 is very important. And the FAV1 is how much you do in the first second. So if you hesitate in the first second, then you're screwed. The whole test is out. You make, make sense? Because you may just blow slowly, 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 and then take off right. In the end, you, get, you will reach the FVC. 
and you will get an FAV1, which is very, very low because your start was not right. OK, so from the time you take off, you start until the time you are on the line of takeoff. It's this volume should not be more than 100 ml or 5% of your FAV. OK, make sense to give you an because otherwise the FAV1 will be wrong. And this, this is why it's not used. You can our thing, they didn't, get, they didn't put it in our results. Mm -hmm. So it has to be uh, reported as an interpreter okay. to see it and to say, I cannot interpret this or not. That was my question. If is it built in the system that it automatically excludes? No. Oh. Okay, sorry, Salam. No, it's fine. So the other one is that should be uh, it was handed what did it what did they change oh, 2017 yeah. yeah. oh, yeah. change to uh, uh sorry, 2019 change to yeah. so the other one is no evidence of faulty uh, zero for sitting which is in this picture as you see the patient started before the zero time which is the layer of here and there should be no evidence of cuff and uh, no evidence of a clotic closure. Um, the closure, like uh, when you do the expiration, define one time as clotic closure, and the cuff is weaker. So maybe in the first second. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, can I go back to the previous part? Yeah. So the no evidence of 40 zero, that's, I think that's essentially the same as the back extrapolated volume. No. There's no reason. Oh my God. Okay. It's not the same, but a quick. You mean it starts early? Yes. And you start the recording this. Yes. Yeah. So when I read about it, the uh, fault is zero, fault is the, uh, it's equivalent thing. It's like you can adjust it by the city. It's not like about the patient. It's the software. Let's say we did. Uh... <clears throat> okay. And I took a line from here. So you can do it as Dr. Lassen said, or you can do it like you take a line, you follow this line, which is called the peak flow line or something, and then you measure the distance from here to here. It has to be less than 5% or less than 100 ml of the whole as you see. So that's the back expressive volume. Is that right? Then the, the from here to here, that's the hesitation to start the test. OK, and the test has to start before zero. So the machine will measure how much gas has been uh, uh, exhaled after the end of inspiration, how much gas has been exhaled. If that will be like for more like a good says again, must have no evidence of faulty zero flow settings. So the setting of the machine will change to like if we go from from the beginning to zero flow, and then it start going up from after one, that's not right. So it has to be the setting start from before zero to look at this. Because if it doesn't start before zero, you are not able to do this. It's, it's a reset, resetting of the access point. That's right, the setting of the access point. That's a, that's a, <laughs> In English. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So and we talk about the cuff and uh, no glottic closure. And it should be must achieve one of the those indicator, the expiratory plateau, and the expiratory time more more than 15 seconds. And if we see is within the repeatability tolerance of or is greater than the largest prior observed VC. We'll talk about the repeatability after. And must have no evidence of obstructive mouthpiece or spirometry. If it's there is obstruction, which we're showing like uh, it's intrathoracic or extrathoracic obstruction. I'm not sure if I, I think. If we spend a lot of time on these details, we will never come to that point. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So our our main issue here, what we are all here for, mm -hmm. is, was to tell you the truth. I read the 18 pages, and I felt like stupid because I don't know what they want to tell me. <laughs> I have no idea what. Uh, so anybody has start start with the changes that has yes. been. Because okay. these things are kind of more or less to technical points, which you guys, okay. you need to look at them. Sure, sure. The PFD, but it's it's actually it's the business of the technician. It's, you should not. It's important to be mentioned. Out. Okay. Don't spend a lot of time. Yes, sure, actually, sure. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go for the much changes. The limit of normal. Exactly. 
so the, all the criteria was doing the upper limit and lower limit, 5% and 95%. The new criteria, they start using the Z-score, and they consider that 5% is the 1.645 as the upper level limit of normal, and the upper limit normal is 1.65. And also they change the severity score to Z-score instead of the percentile. Okay, and things you know it, guys, like the 5% or the Z-score uh, 0.165 is the gray zone, where it's like it's normal or abnormal. It could be normal for the population, but it also it could be abnormal in this uh, 5%. Uh, if we take here the FLB1 for a patient uh, age 22 year old and the other uh, patient 88 year old, and we check the FLB1, so to compare it to the median for the upper or lower normal, uh, this patient is being far away from his predictable, and this one is like almost near his predictable. Okay. So why this she switched from G score to percentile? So there is not really being convinced about why they, they did the switching, but the mission is like they leave the bias and the z-score, it would be easier to deal with. As we can consider the zero is the predictable, and from that we can go up or down. They also mentioned it's because of a mortality difference. That's so for the uh, grading, the severity. Yeah, so that. That would uh, for the severity, of, yeah, so uh, yeah. this one. Uh, so if we go to the severity, severity, they switch the severity uh, from like, uh, as we said, usually 70% above is mild, 70 to 60 moderate. They switch it just for three grade is mild, moderate, severe. So the mild one, 0.1645 to minus, uh, minus 2.5 and uh, moderate 2.5 to 4, above 4 is severe. What they find with their studies, like people who getting in the group between point uh, with the mild group, they found the risk of mortality, it would be mild over years and the moderate within the those people coming between 2.5 and 4 and more severe and high mortality above 4. Anybody what is a Z-score? Good question. <laughs> Who's going to answer? Z-score, I think, I got it correctly. This is something that they, this is this, like the standard something like the standard deviation and it's different from patient to patient. So eventually the machine should give you a z-score for the patient. So what is a z-score of negative one? Yeah, I mean... It, 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 it defines, know. I think, the area under the diaphragm where you have the majority of the patients with the same uh, so age, so sex, high, acidity that most of the patients will fall over there. So what is the z-score of negative one? Number of standards deviations. Yeah, so how many kind of deviations are there? So how many kind of deviations are that? One. One, right? So each, uh, so if you have, I think you have the one with the, the curve. So um, the z score, yeah, so the z, so this is a z score. Zero will be the median. Minus one or one is one standard deviation above or below. So that's 34 point something percent, I think. And then each one is another standard deviation. So they chose this line here is 1.6, which is kind of where 5% of the population um, below that would be, that they say abnormal. Though 5% may be, may be normal, but that's the thing as abnormal. So, um, and then the same thing at the very top. So you will not, you will not lose patient or like give false name or false, false positive. This patient lay in that small area, which is only 5% could be normal. 5%, yeah. right? And yes. If you remember back in the day when you do epidemiology, the more you move this line here, you can bring it this line here to two or, you know, to 1%, you know, uh, or half, and that will, uh, that will um, decrease your sensitivity, but will increase your specificity. And the same thing if you move. Uh, the other way around. Right. So they say, I will they say, uh, let's do it. 1.6 percent, which is 1.4 mm -hmm. But the 5 percent, so like, the one limit normal, is yeah. the same as 1.65. Yes, yes, so that's what I'm saying. Basically, they didn't do a major changes unless they just switched the meat. 
Exactly. Like no, the, no, no, the no, no, idea is, no. to, to me, I don't know. The idea is still the same. No, yeah, but it did what, not just change it. Well, I'm yeah, sure they have a reason. Z score is if you if, if you want to think about it, just go back to internal medicine and think about the <clears> bone <throat> density. Yeah. When you do a bone scan, it comes with a Z score. It doesn't come with a, and <laughs> the Z score is the score the mean the zero for that patient within his age group. This is what it is. This is the big difference. So in people, when you are having a patient who is 85 years old and doing DFT, it will not compare his data, percentage of the DFT, according to the old data, which we will have a old patient, which he's compared to. Now he's going to be compared to the normal 85 years old patients, to the normal of his age. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is why you cannot do you cannot do percentage because the percentage would be go, go to the whole population. Unless you call it, this patient has this much percentage of his age uh, uh, specific group. Uh, mm -hmm. specific group. Mm -hmm. So it's the age specific, the most important thing which has, if I understood it right, the most important which has brought it up because if you take our data from our, what, what we're dealing with since 2005, we are comparing one to a whole group and do percentages. Now we, we're doing with this one to his group, to his normal group. Then this should resolve the uh, conflict yeah. between ATS and gold. Right? Yeah. Number no, one, number two, no, no, you will no. not, you, not you will, the most important, you will not miss the abnormals in the young age and the normals in the old age. Because many patients, if you take Get 85 year old doing spirometry and 17 year old doing spirometry. Okay. This lower upper limit of normal and lower limit of normal for the 17 year old is different than the one in 85 years old. If you do with a Z score, you will find right away that this patient falls within his age group or he doesn't fall. It depends. Yeah. And the other one, and again, now if, if you recall, we, with the spirometry, we have problems. We are likely to underdiagnose obstructive, especially obstructive lung because we're talking about spirometry. We're not talking about lung volume. Spirometry is diagnostic for, for uh, obstructive diseases. It's suggestive for restrictive, but not. Yes. Anyway, mm -hmm. for obstructive lung disease, you will miss many abnormals in the young age if you take our data. And you will diagnose many older if you yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. This is why they did this Z come come with the Z score. The same we were doing for bone bone density. The lower limit is normal, it improved as well, but they said the Z score is like still more that, exactly. So I think if I understood the whole idea, this is what they want to keep sign and make sure they don't get into this. Because the last thing I really as a physician, don't care much about, let's say, over-diagnosing elderly, but I care much about under-diagnosing young. Because if I give an, an 85 year old uh, spireva and uh, advert, he's not going to die if he takes it. But if somebody who's 30 year old, you miss, you miss him, then you are in trouble. I think this is what the, I don't know if you guys got the same message. This is what happens when they when they <laughs> use the GLI and uh, energy enhanced area enhanced. They they provide you for age appropriate upper and lower limit of normal. Yes, yes, and this is what this, this, this but that's what we were using for. To be honest, yeah, I mean, I was Nina. I mean, I don't think there's no, a... but it is not very clear for the reader sometimes because and, and the data are there. Right. now if. Let's just do it mathematically. Mm -hmm. If you get a specific group of patients where you have the normal median, any deviation is obvious. But if you if you mix many, many patients in the same group, this difference is that the, our problem is not in the median. Our problem mm -hmm. in the extremes, mm -hmm. where you easily miss things and they can overlap. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want, if you have a lot of things in the table here, and you want to know what's going on, you likely want to put the cups together and uh, masses together and uh, I, I propose to guys so you know who is deviating. But if these are coming close to each other, okay, 
you will not see the deviation within one group in the extremes. Does it make sense? Yeah, I agree with you. And so, back to Jasmine said, do you remember the first lecture when you gave the PFT mm -hmm. when he said like from where did they came from the lower limit of normal and upper limit of normal? It looks like the fifth percentile of right. changes. And like when you have the like that that came from the Z score. Right. Yes. Thing. So I mean, now when you have the Z score, you can use it for the lower limit and upper limit, and you use it for the severity instead of using it. For 20 percent, 30 percent, right. or 70 percent. That's what I'm saying. It's not a big difference, right. but the thing is like more clear to the yeah. whole like standardization right. of reading the PFT. Yeah, but I mean like there is no effect on the predicted value. It's when yeah, I mean with the percentile things is yeah. the average, and here is zero is also the average. Yeah. So basically, if you get those population put on the z score, they will be divided on the same scale. Yeah, but not severity wise, just not severity wise, yes. but on the scale, like but they want to be like standardized reading yeah, right. and, with and upper and lower, and, 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 and even in the final, even in the final, yeah. If it's small, yeah. fine, like it's the, the tiny specific and, and changes this, could be changed, and, very right. and, and this is what we are, as I said, what, what we are interested <laughs> about is the extremes. Mm -hmm. We don't want to miss yeah. the extremes. The clear ones are clear ones, you know, somebody mm -hmm. 50 year old come to you. With if you want of 30 percent, if you say 30 percent or you take it to the Z score, it's gonna be severe disease, very clear. Our problem is the young, yeah, where are where they push to the left or the elders which are pushed to the right. So, like this one, like they put the different ages from the 80 like to 10 year old. Uh, there's the percentile, the Z score. And the disease score is only mild, moderate, severe. And some people, when they were 80, before that, they were being considered as a mild obstruction. But now it's like they are completely normal. Exactly. When put the and for the young, it's the other way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The difference yes, is because the percentile, they were using the percentage to detect the severity. But here is just you not know, the five, the lower five percent size is normal. The 1.65, they take that as a total. And the minus score is Z, Z score minus four. Oh, oh, yes, all Z scores. All Z scores. Score. Zero is the median, M minus 1.65 or 4 is where you start having the abnormalities, and you go to 2.5, then to 4, two. and that you're done. The more and more lift, uh, more down. I wouldn't spend a long time, but just like a quick point. It's a big <laughs> difference that I'm just me really this saying, hey, this, this patient has obstructive disease, and he's like, listen, this lower of normal is moderately severity. And then I read another test in a different way. But the ATS and ERS is trying to make us all have the same Simple. reading, the same language, to make the internist, not us, us, we get, you know, not, I don't look at who read the test, yeah, to be honest, look at the number. But for the internist, they will look at the read to make it's sure right. that they have a standardization between all of us using exactly the same number and exactly the same software. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. It's, uh, as I said in the beginning. Yes. Just to allow the bias. Yes. Yes. And to add the extremes. Yep. The other thing. Yep. Still. Yep. So, response as uh, the all the criteria, they were looking to the absolute or the relative the absolute, like 200 cc, different 21, out of the VC. The relative change is a percentage we use 12%. But the only criteria they were using the initial, the pre, and the post, uh, if you want, or FDC, without looking to the predictive value. So the new criteria, they saying, no, we have to look to the predictive value because all this initial value, if you want, FDC, is related to the age six patient with that predictive value. Did you get it, guys? Yeah. Because to, to start with, you have a predictive well, value. You are right? assessing the response for that specific patient for this patient mm -hmm. is he responding or not it's right. inter-individual it's not inter-individual right. the inter-individual is the z-score mm -hmm. when you talk about the intra-individual that you cannot use the z-score for the same one for right. same because it's, it doesn't make sense you know? mm -hmm. because it's going to be the same and then yep. you can, you can end up with number either indefinite or zero right this is what you're going to get so this is the practice as we said like it's like an example the patient with FEV1 was uh, 3.2, post 2.4, FEV1 predicted it was 3.32, and the person was 12%, which above 10%, so post-plan response positive. And we think this is very useful, like 
uh, we've been talking about this, and Dr. Jasmine has been telling us this for two years now, that for him, you'll have a patient with a half a liter of DV1. Mm -hmm. Okay, for example, you start him on bronchodilator response, his if EV, like if it goes by 100 ml, but like if this 100 ml for this patient is 20% yeah. of his breath. Yeah. But when you do the numbers, he's a non-responder. And actually, we had one last week with Dr. Jasmine, and we reviewed the the PFT on the old criteria non-responder, same thing. As if EV1 was for 70, for 60, increased by 70 ml, for old criteria non-responder, but on the new criteria as a responder. So yeah, this 70 And the opposite is right. Yes. The opposite. Um, we had a, two days ago, we had a patient 23%. Uh, so he was, was not. not. No, it wasn't on the old and the new criteria. It depends on the predictive value. Predictive value like four liters. So. Yeah. You know why they, but why, uh, why are they changing it? Because also there are studies, I think there's one specific study, so it's mortality benefit mortality. as well. Yeah. So they're trying, Above to, 8%. they're really trying to try to find those patients who really will benefit so they can be aggressive on, uh, on terms of your therapy mm -hmm. compared to have like a, um, you know, so, Compared to not, so actually, morbidity and mortality higher the more reversible you are. Yeah, more than eight percent, they found more reversible you yeah. are, the more your mortality and morbidity, especially right. the morbidity and mortality. Why? Because it means you have an unstable disease. This is what it means. So, you mean like more reversibility, yes, more, more when morbidity? you have reversibility, mm -hmm. you have to hit hard mm -hmm. because your morbidity, morbidity and mortality is higher than if you have not. Yeah. Why? The, it's like the patient with uh, has COVD asthma or one lab syndrome. They have more disease, especially morbidity. Mm -hmm. Mortality may be a little bit marginal, but the morbidity is different. And, and it's definitely higher in asthma, not COVD, compared to asthma alone or COVD alone yeah. in the same age. Okay. Because what it means, you have an unstable disease. It's like coronary artery disease. People who have fixed coronary stenosis, they have only stable angina. Who dies? Not these people, the people with a small disease with a rupture because it's very unstable gland. Same you need to think about lungs. If you get exposed to any weather change or viral infection, you may go down hills very fast, you know. This is why this patient is very important to know. And I agree with it. If you look at the numbers, sometimes, I mean, if you are all what you're doing is 500 cc, and I'm not expecting you to do more than 200 cc to be responsible. You know what it means? It's 40%. That's what I'm asking for. No one in the world can do more than 40% to go for a student. That is a difference. You know? I don't know if the doctor just wants to add something, but no, I agree. So, I look at it. No, uh, for me, like if I have an asthma, my goal is to make sure that they're never not reversible anymore on, on PFTs. Uh, uh, obviously, not to get them to fix area obstruction because that's not very good, but um, you know, improve, but improve them to the point where you be aggressive with your inhalers to really open them up as much as you can. So, that's how I put myself. Like something that Dr. Justin just said reversibility is it the same as bronchial response as reversible? No, those are different. Change the answer. I'm asking this question to each other. No, really, like, that's, that's a pretty important point. It's like, is reversibility exactly the same as significant response to bronchodilator or not? Because you can be normal, you can have a significant uh, response to bronchodilator. No, no, let's say you are abnormal. What's the difference between if I say in my note, this patient has significant bronchodilator response, or I say this patient has completely reversible bronchodilator response? Normalization versus improvement to meet the cut line. That's right. Ability, right. So reversibility means that after I give the bronchodilator, it came back to normal. Is, uh, yeah, normal. It depends normal. where you're starting. From. That's right. Yeah. But uh, significant response means that it just met this point, but it did not went back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. A question: How do you differentiate them coming from, let's say, from the asthma, especially that we're talking here about obstruction, when you're talking about like remote? How do you differentiate between, like, this is like the extreme thinking, because, you know, like, let's say, asthma patients, they, 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 and they, that's not reversible, it's not reversible anymore. Yeah, if it's not reversible anymore, and the FTV1, like, less than the lower limit of normal, during the normal status, like, during, like, not an attack, that's like, it's not in the, in the, yes, that's right. Yes. Sorry, so no. no, that's fine. So, 
sorry, so Dr. Russell, how would that apply to mortality and morbidity? How do you differentiate with the clinical study? It's getting worse. It's like because what I'm thinking, so if you lose reversibility, okay, wouldn't that clearly increase mortality? Yeah, what Dr. Jasmine Beth Russell said at the beginning, if at the beginning I came with you with an asthma and my reversibility is higher, it means I need to treat to reverse, I mean, my significant response is higher. I need to treat and to stabilize you. See, what's the medication that I can give you to stabilize you and to decrease that reversibility, to reach the maximum I can do? If I did everything I couldn't, and your reversibility start going down and down, unfortunately, your mortality is high. And, and the other thing is, I mean, this is one point. The other important point, which is, which is why I always said morbidity more than mortality. Yeah, we're good. What happens if you have very reactive airway disease? You will have more steroid shots, more antibiotics, more hospitalization. Then, if you have more of these, your mortality is going to be likely more. Okay? You know, actually, you know, sometimes having my fixed obstructive disease, you will have better mortality than if you have a normal high reversible disease. Mortality works. You know, because this patient is fixed. Okay, he's more mild. He can live his life. He doesn't have these frequent exacerbations. The ex the, what is and let's talk about COVD, and we can extrapolate to asthma. It's not the, the, the data are not so fluid for asthma like for COVD. But I think just by thinking about it, about the basics of what's going on, they would be not alive but very alive. What is the most common? Uh, mortality factor in COVID. Previous exacerbations. If you have more than two exacerbations last year, your mortality is yeah, you drop yeah. so yeah. yeah. easy. So, and the more exacerbation, then the more reversible disease you have, the more yeah. exacerbation you will die. With the to have. With weather like this, with the, with the flu, with rhinovirus, with corona, with whatever. Every time you get what? You get antibiotics, you get steroids. Sometimes you end up in the hospital for a couple of days. You come out, you, you keep this. This circle will in the end catch you, you know, because you've been in and out, in and out in this system. It's like, you know what? Simple and easy. Um, you, the human being is like a car. Are you you are safe as long as you, no, nobody touches the car. You didn't get the car to be fixed. Once you've been get once, you keep it. Sit. 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 <laughs> yeah, for, for the time sake, uh, just quickly, as you said, right, for the body criteria is the 70%. So we are missing people in extreme age with their limitation. Okay, this is the... Everyone knows that. The percentile, uh, if you want above, uh, we see above the fifth percentile, yes. So it's a uh, matter of obstruction. So you do, yes, percentile, the VC above the uh, fifth percentile or the Mm -hmm. Z-score 1.65, normal spirometry, phosphate restriction, but you need uh, one volume to stick that. And this one is uh, normal, mild, moderate, then severe obstruction. Uh, this synapses, this is a, a new thing. They, they're saying is if it's uh, the ratio, if you want over VC ratio is low, but if you want within normal range, uh, that could be either a uh, suggestion of uh, developing of obstructed uh, lung disease or a new growth of airway and lung parenchyma. Uh, non specific pattern, as we know, it's uh, low FEV1 FVC, but normal uh, ratio. For that, you need the TLC just one capacity to see if it's restriction or not. If it's not restriction, TLC is normal. So they follow those patients uh, after a couple of years, two thirds of them, they still non specific, one third of them, they went to either obstruction or restriction or mixed. Is still included in the new guidelines? Yes. 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 And in current and former people who smoked, they usually leave it as preserved ratio and get spiral. No, no. Also, prismism for the, the, the anyone else is not specific. Yeah, that's, that's what it changed from the interpreter to a physician. If you're just reading the test and you don't know anything about the patient, you will just read it and interpret like as the numbers you have. If you know your patient, he's a smoker and he has like, you are the physician taking care of this patient, your interpretation will be different. Okay?
Okay. So in 2005, the uh, uh, recommendation was uh, to see the obstruction as we said, if you want over VC, then the dilution, then if you want SVC. We will go those five steps, but now it, with uh, the new guideline, you can go with it, but mainly you do the if you want VC because this VC is not contained with the GLI and it's also it's not through the spirometry. It's, uh, you can take it with a lung volume. So it's not standardized. Yes. Uh, FEV6 is not contained with the GLI6 also, and uh, inspiratory capacity is just uh, those three points just for the future uh, researches. Uh, inspiratory capacity, it could be used later on with the obstruction as it is. The first things can affect the COPD or obstructive people with dyspnea and exercise interference. Also, the slope of the curve of the loop, uh, flow loop can detect some obstruction if it's not detected off EV1 or PC. And some non-invasive technique like oscillometry, we usually with the uh, children, young ages, depends on the wave uh, for the uh, bottles. Uh, central or upper airway obstruction, all of you guys know it, fixed obstruction of variable extrathoracic or variable intrathoracic. How's the roof shape? Okay. Uh, lung volume impairment, uh, the TLC low, so lung volume is not contained with a new criteria of the Z score, as we said, it's also back with the percentile. If the RV over TLC above the 95, so there's hyperinfiltration and possible air So the If there is uh, air trapping, FRC, TLC above 95, there is no trapping, sorry, it should be simple obstruction like interstitial line disease. If you go there and there's some of, uh, air trapping, then you will see if there's obstruction or not. If there's obstruction, it's mixed disorder between restriction and uh, obstruction. If there is no air trapping, uh, sorry, if there is no obstruction, so we call it as a complex restriction, it's like obesity. The other uh, side, uh, the percentile above 95 uh, TLC, so possible hyperinflation. Uh, then you do, if there's air trapping, if the FRC over the TLC above 95 percentile, you said hyperinflation. Mm -hmm. If not, it's just a large one. Uh, then the same thing, so if it's uh, less than 95, then you look for the air trapping, hyperinflation, or not. So it's essentially not much changed. No, yeah. no. The main thing I think this complex uh, restriction is complex. Uh, yeah. This is the new thing. Which is they said is less than 10% like the population that they are in complex mm -hmm. And there's no like significant right. clinical oh, okay. value. Yeah. Okay, those we talk about the so DLCO. So it's better the conduction of gas transfer from expired gas to red blood cells. It usually depends on uptake of the carbon monoxide. It depends on the surface area, diffusion uh, probability between the capillary and the alveolar, and the volume of capillary blood, the hemoglobin, and the reaction rates between the hemoglobin and the gas. So it's the criteria. So it's concentration via the, the volume and the DLCO here. Uh, so if it's uh, lower than the lower uh, limit of normal, so, sorry, so this is upper, uh, the lower of the normal. So what's the causes? More, mainly there is more volume of the blood. That's mean you have erythrocytosis, polycythemia, or there is a blood inside the alveolar, like alveolar hemorrhage. Asthma obesity also can increase it, increase intrathoracic pressure, increase uh, blood going to the lung, so increase all the shunt left to right. Something in more time to lift to Lift to right shunt, yeah. yeah. Is it written? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't see it. They're getting gold. That's a bad sign. Okay, uh, DSCO um, above the limit normal, you look to the, with the, as we said, like uh, the equation, the volume. Low, the was, no, maybe. Low, yeah. 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 So the volume, if the volume is uh, normal, so there is a pulmonary vascular abnormality, like pulmonary hypertension. Uh, And if the volume is low, you look to the concentration. If the concentration is uh, low, you lose the alveolar capillary structure, 
produce of lung volume like emphysema IOD. The reconstruction is high, so incomplete lung expansion, fair to take deep breath. So they're going to report now these two new things. It should be. It should yeah, be there. Yeah. Yeah. The alveolar yeah. volume is there. Yeah. The KCO or yeah. the KCO. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's funny. That's what it is. Yes. Are they recording the KCO now? Yeah. Oh, like when I did my fellowship there, it was like since 2009. Yeah. Oh, the next slide so has the, the new. That's yeah, the that's, new, can you put the yeah. newer? So yeah, this one is more the so. lab, how, how the lab should be. Yeah. Not our lab. That's how I trained, like it looks like this. Yeah, the family is in the community. Oh, okay. That was, <laughs> so this is mine. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody want to read? Mm -hmm. yeah. No. So, Shane, let's do it. Yeah, this is the one I got. Yeah. Guys, guys, okay. Shane, yeah, let's do it. Mm, let me read it. Can get closer here. Let's see. <laughs> no, I'm trying. I'm doing my best. So the start. If you want to visit, train. So I'm um, trying to see the yeah the no the the Z score. No. Z score. Basically, it's obstruction, right? And it has both. Oh, I'm, I'm just going with the with the. Yeah, with to start the, with if you want to visit. So what are what are you seeing? Yeah. The lower limit of normal is 65, and the best it is, is so 72. It is above. So basically, it is normal. We read it so far, it is it is normal ratio so far. We're going to look at the other parameters. I want to look at the Z score. Z score minus 0.7, yeah. which is which is normal. Yeah, and we normal? said we said minus 1.6. Yes. Right. That's good. So it is normal. Right. So normal with the Z score and normal with the lower limit of normal. Okay. Yeah. And let's go with the FBC. The FBC, it is minus. You want to do the dilution? So basically, with the, with the Z score, it's easier. Minus 2.2, uh, we can say it is reduced. Okay. And uh, with the severity, now we can say the moderate. I mean, I'm, I'm just assuming scenarios. Yeah. Don't assume. You're not assuming. Don't assume. Don't assume. Don't assume. <laughs> okay. There's a BFT in front of you. Okay. So FBC is low. FEV1 is low. And the ratio is normal. If you have only experimental, yes, like no, I want, say. To, I want to look at the TLC. So just to see. That's right. So yeah. the TLC Shane, is Shane, don't go straight step by step. If you want is low, okay. if BC is low, ratio is normal. What's that? Like it's still, I mean, uh, I mean, my, my favor, my favor uh, restriction. Okay, so, uh, okay, okay. Good. Good. Hey, so just to go first. Okay. That's it. But before you look at the TLC, you have post bronchodilator numbers too. Then look at the book. Right. Yeah, so I can't. I can't say it's a restriction if I don't have the. I can say yeah, might yeah. be. Might, yeah. might so just right. suggestive. So just right. Right. So just right. Right. So just 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 right. So post bronchodilator can you show them with your finger which, which one is I it? saw the minus 1.42 this post 1.6 here and the uh, G is 1.3 so yeah yeah so if you will take 1.61 one minus the minus 1.30 1. 1. divided, divided by 2.29 percent oh the okay so yeah, you take the actual after minus the actual before divided by yeah. FEV1 predicted. If it's more than 10%, that's possible. You multiply it by 100. But what about the. Yeah. You should. Otherwise, it's kind of like, <laughs> otherwise, you need to be outside of the fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> you, you will get surprised. <laughs> so 1.61. Minus 1.30 divided by 2.20. 2.20. Should be 15%. It's 10%. It's 10%. Okay, so it's the, yeah, 10 points. So that's the limit. So we'll say what we will say. It will go with positive. It is more than 10 or 10 or more than 10. It is 10. 10 or more. 10 or more or more than 10. Yes, yes, okay. Yes, okay. Let's go back. But it's already more than 200. Okay. That's no. the old thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a good What about the post D score? So we didn't say anything about the post D score, is that right? We yeah. said the reversibility and the significance just 
what we call the, the what we did right now. Okay. Uh, yeah. You don't need this score. You don't need your plus one. The only predicted mm -hmm. value. So because there is a z score, you yeah. still be happy yeah. with the z score. When you the do, do it, 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 when you want to do the reversibility, <laughs> the only data, fixed data you have is the predicted. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Isn't it? So what you do is that other abnormalities are absolute values which you got before, after, mm -hmm. and divided by, by this. Degree. It's not percentage. It. It's by this number. If you have more than ten percent, you're done. It. It's not the difference. There is no z score. Yeah. Okay. You don't. You cannot use the z score. You can. Mathematically, you cannot use the z score within the same individual. It doesn't it means you don't know what you're doing. That's right. So, so Shaheen, why, now why, why did it include it in the report? Shaheen, because yeah, yeah. that's pre and post. Forget about it. Okay. <laughs> so, spirometry result is? Spirometry is a bit different than the report. No, no, yeah, the yeah. whole thing. Spirometry, yeah. if you are that thing who's reading the spirometry, what would you say? You don't have one code. You just looked at the spirometry. What would you no, say? No, I would say uh, normal, normal. Spirometry in favor of restriction with a good bronchodilator response. And then so just why you're saying in favor, you will say there is no obstruction. There is no obstruction. That's why the spirometry was built for. Yeah. There is no obstruction. However, the FEV1 if and VC are low with a normal ratio that might suggest restriction. Then we need lung volume to be to confirm. And there is a significant uh, anyway, that, and there is reversibility in here. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, there is a full reversibility. Did okay. No, I, I didn't see the reversibility. It's 1.5. Is that right? Is this score? Where is this? This score is 1.61. Yeah. Uh, oh, so it's reversible. reversible. Yeah. yeah, it's reversible. Because yeah. I don't see numbers. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm asking. Okay. <laughs> then Dr. Jasmine, he was like so kind with you, he did the lung volume for you. So, so I think it just so when you say complete, because you, you take this one and you compare it to this one, right? Yeah, or this this code no, 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 no. is easier. Yeah, this code. This code for this people, this uh, height, this the six, the whole yeah, yeah. people. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Well, the the normalization. normalization. So this is we call it complete reversibility, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. More than one point six five. That's right. Okay, one point. Let's make it quick, guys. Long so, volume. It, uh, no, no, no. Shaheen, he did this parameter. So Kitab, you will do the long volume. So, you said that we take the TLC to the RV. Just start with the T. Is there a restriction or not? Just TLC, the lung volume. That's the patient best, lower limit of normal. There is no restriction. Okay. Uh, is there hyperinflation or not? Uh, is there? How do you define how you, how you define hyperinflation? That's right. I just forgot. Is it like you need to do the, the, the old one? Oh, okay. Percentage. Yeah, that doesn't. So yeah, it's 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 one thirty three percent. So there's an increased volume. No, 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 the the TLC. Oh, the TLC. Yeah. Okay, and then you have a ratio. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, RV over RV. Yeah. Yeah. I, I you have to calculate. It's there. It's there for you. It's RV TLC. It's fifty nine percent. Is that higher or low? Or normal? It's red, so it's abnormal, right? This is a percentage. Above the no, you don't look at the percentage. No, 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 don't look at the percentage. Because it's already a percentage. You have lower limit of normal. Yeah. It's already high. Yeah. But how would you like to see 43? But he's your best. So you are you doing a percentage to. No, you don't do percentage to percentage. Ratio is not percentage. It's already 20%. RV to TLC ratio is basically this number 207 over 497, which is 59%. Which is here. 69. What is the lower limit of normal? Upper limit and lower limit. That's it. Yeah, because you have the predictive and you go above the predictive. No, no, no. no, 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 no. It's no, above no. the upper limit of normal. Yeah, it's the upper limit of normal. It's the lower one, and this is your number. Yeah. That's your number lies to the left, within uh, or to the right. Simple as it is. We don't take the z score. This is when you see that, sorry. Every number has an upper limit and lower limit, except the. Uh, but uh, when they say median, or sorry, the predicted, that means this is the predicted. Yeah. But that's not the predicted. The predict. I mean, you can have a range, right? The upper limit normal, like we talked about, would be the 5% filtered 95%, right? So this is 5%. 
Lower than that would be the five percent. Right, right, right. Upper than that, the five is fifty nine percent. So he is above. Yes. This is pushed to the right. So it's abnormally elevated. So what do you have? Now you have the one fold. So you believe say it's a suggestible restrictor. Yeah. You are the one who's gonna help the patient say is it restrictive or not, and what type of restriction if it is restrictive. It should not be restrictive because <laughs> we have increased uh, uh, the, the ratio is, is higher than the What's the TLC? TLC is normal. This is it. Restriction is TLC yeah. only. Yeah. You cannot have restriction with a normal What TLC. normal TLC? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So there is no restriction. But there is a uh, hyperinflation <laughs> with air traffic and <laughs> air traffic, which is empty. Thus, so, there is a reversibility. What does it look like? So before that, <laughs> slide, so now, can you go to two slides fast? <laughs> like, <laughs> Go back. Get a restriction the same. Go back there. Yeah, back. Sorry. But for the one for the algorithm. What is that? Yes. Stop it here. Okay. So the so DLC in here wasn't less than five I'm not guys. Talking about this. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. With the new guidelines. The shade. No, TLC was not less than five percent. Is that like a dummy? No. So no. TLC more than 95%? No, 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 it was not. No, 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 no. So it's known here. So then they did the FRC to TLC and or yes, RV to TLC, yes, and that yes. was yes. And he has what? Hyperinflation. So there's no restriction, yes. but there's hyperinflation. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So there's no restriction and hyperinflation. It's hyperinflated. So as a general, what are you going to say in this, uh, both of you, what are you going to say with this? Can you go back to the? With all I would these say the spirometry and the total lung capacity and everything. It's not like asthma to me because there is... No, 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 no guys, you're an interpreter. You don't say the diagnosis, you're going to write a report now. You're going to write a report. If you're going to say asthma, people will take it as an asthma because you're a pulmonologist. Yeah. But that's not, that's an hyperactive airway. Not all yeah. hyperactive airway are asthma. Yeah. So what's your interpretation? So no, 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 no. Non-specific. Possible underlying obstruction in the setting of air traffic or uh, heart inflation. No specific factors. Okay. I would say there is no obstruction in spirometry with the reversibility of the um, of the parameters and spirometry. And there is no, no restriction. Yeah, there is no restriction in long volumes. Yes, and there is and, hyperinflation. And there is hyperinflation. Let the physician who's yeah. taking care of this patient figure it out. Figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Because then you have to put the clinical aspect yeah. Yeah, into it. Clinical correlation yeah. of clinical. <laughs> <laughs> That's what right. as pathologists. Right. 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 So, as the radiologists. Yeah. Oh, then, you know, yeah. don't you hate when a radiologist says, right. I like to draw a copy of home record. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. No, it's not doing that. Because I had, like, when right. my patient said, Oh, this patient might have this. Oh, if you read the body, patient. Yeah, but I know the patient. Yeah. That's different. That's your patient. Good job, Saddam. Thank you. There's only one thing that he didn't mention. It has been changed, which is the FEQR. I uh, put it here, but you don't have time. Yeah, yeah, can you go back to it? It's really important to be Q1, FEV1, Q1, FEV1, Q1. one q one q one q one one q 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 one the ratio, the result, like that, like that's what increase mortality. So, which is what would do? What can we use if I know my clinical scenario? Mm -hmm. Like if it's COPD, I will be, a, I will use the both score for mortality. If it's asthma, I will use like control and everything. But if I don't know the patient, I can use this for mortality. But what it is? Saddam will tell us in five minutes. Saddam. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I have to pick up the one of the patients divided by the prediction. That's so I went like different to start. There was like if you want the Q and if you want also the square of the height, they would mention about the mortality. Uh, the Q one is like specific for gender. Uh, uh, so for the male you do 0. 0.5 and for the female you do 0. 0.4. That's right. Uh, this is for the calculation. And there's yes. the example here. If like patient 70 year old female, if you want 0. 0.9. So if you want to queue, well, here would be 2.25. How did they reach that? They take the 0.9 divided by the divided predicted already for female, which is 0.4. 0 0 mm -hmm. yeah. And it came 2.25. Right. right. If it's closer to 1, 
They said it's indicate greater risk of death from this yeah, disease. Which I didn't understand. If this patient is like yeah. 40 year old. Like, Technically, they are telling you if, if, if you want for a female is less than 400, she's going to die. And it's less than it doesn't, it doesn't matter yeah. the age. Uh, so the I age don't be, it matter the if you be one. Right, but if it's yes. 40 year old. <laughs> no, if it's the female, it's so 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 I have a question. If it's this is like, you're going to get one, right? If it is 40 year old female and if you want is the same point nine, it will give us the same result. Yeah, going to yes. yeah. and we see the same to the one. Yes, because here like F E V one is very low compared to her age. Because it doesn't depend on the age. The right, but it's the same. Two point two five the result will be. Yes. With a 70 year old. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's what I know. Uh, just me, what, yeah, no, I agree. That's what I said too. Yeah. So when I read it, like it is it like they did. Mm -hmm. They already did the calculation for uh, the observed, uh, like uh, the FEV1Q, mm -hmm. according to six and like specific percentile for every patient and male and female. Mm -hmm. They use they found this number, so this number is fixed. But you use your FEV1 to divide it by this number, and the, like the closest the one, the higher risk of death. But if you are 80 or 60 or anything like that, I think they already did this not according to age; it's according to uh, gender. If this patient is 40 years old, a 30 year old female, okay, and have the same number, is he 0.9? Their mortality is definitely going to be way higher than this one, the patient who is 70 year old female. So I don't think it's sex specific or it's sex and age specific. It's no, no, here it's no, only just. But I think, I think the, 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 but the, this is why I didn't really understand it. But, but I think the result will it will be based on FEV1, not the age. Yeah, that's basically. If the FEV1 is bad, it says yeah, by six or eight year old. And I learned some tips on that for him. This was a zero point five for female and zero point four for for male. Because okay. the one so this is what they find. They didn't say the A for age. What it means, mm -hmm. if you are if your F E V one, if you are 30 year old female mm -hmm. and your F E V one is zero point zero point one. Oh, okay. Then you gonna you gotta more. <laughs> and if you are is your risk of death is the same like if you are a 70 year old female with zero point five. I mean, the pediatric one is much like more no, understanding. No, no, no. They have it's a good question. Because they don't study the age. The it's not. I don't. I think something is missing. Here. Yeah. Why are we using the age and the other? Um, like when we say we are overestimating or underestimating. And but now we're just using adult, the gender. Here. That's what they said. Well, like yeah. Let's say they are the one who did the guideline. But that's all right. So in adult over the age of twenty-five years, FEV one. Typically decline in healthy non smoker by 30 ml years, yeah, blah, blah. Yeah. However, this does not necessarily translate into a threshold of change that can be expected within the individual between two repeated measurements. In a, uh, this part I read maybe five times. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to get the eyes. And the question what's the clinical indication? How are we going to risk certify the patient? To but you have the severity. So you, open, you, have the yeah. you have the severity already. Yeah. This is severity. You're done. So I thought that the other one is more like yes. yes. because it gives you percentage on this score. Yeah, as it gives you this score, then you use that with the age because it's like one session, one hour. This is for the other. 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 This makes more sense. 25 years old to 120 year old, it's the same. That's what they're saying. This is the other. I know. Yeah, yeah. From 25 yeah. year old, which is not the pediatric, as I know, till like 100 year old or more, it's the same. That's what they are saying. But I will read more about you're gonna, it. You're going to use the boy and fall for the female, regardless of it. That's what I think. I might be wrong. Yeah, I know. I understand. Logic. Now, if they take like the, in the kids, the Z score, it, the Z score alone will automatically. Take care of everything, adjust for all variables. Mm -hmm. Then it's simple. You say, like, 
if your Z score is, or the difference between your current score, so that Z score in FEV1 is 0.2 or 0.3, which is 50 percent, then you're done. It makes sense because the Z score will take care of all variables. So this but, equation, they use like two reading. There's like a time one, time two, and they consider the age and they yeah, consider and the, the difference age, yeah. between when they're both two tests. Yes, that's yeah. to give you the 0. 0.4 or 0. 0.6, the no, one no, that you're going to use to equation. divide it. Is that right? No, no, that's different equation. Ah, okay. that's, ah, that's for the children. For children. Yeah. It's more, it makes more sense because they use well, that's I don't know. The children, they put, the children, they put the age. Yeah. The non-children, they did not put the age in there. Right. And that's what I don't, but I don't know why they did not. I agree with you. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. But I don't know. Yeah, but the goal is to see what is significant change over time. Usually that's over time, right? So usually I, I used to wear it when I read the PFTs. The part of your PFTs is we did comparing it to older people. Yeah, yeah. So usually if it's 0.15 liters, uh, not much uh, less than that, then that you can see maybe part of your image is from one test to another, 0.15. Uh, more than that, maybe abnormal. So they have, they came up with a different equation to tell you what is the correct change of PFTs with over time. What is significant, what is not significant. And you can even look at the, the, the one that I sent you, the study itself. You will explain there is an alternative approach to the FEV 1Q. There is another alternative approach that you can use. The high square. Yeah. That's, right. That's right. That's right. They're saying the Q1 is the most predictable one. Yes. So, uh, like, it, they did not control the time. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. But I didn't understand. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This is why I like it. Like, it's 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 as considerable changes. Oh. And if it goes by this chain, so I think it's not it's not a it's not a correct result. You can see it's not the one study. It's a question today. It's getting closer to one. Yeah, it's just the possible question for the size of the same thing that the same policy would be for the foundation as you see. I can, yeah, still recording. Yeah, like, let's do it quickly. Then. This one is just the possible questions that she might ask you. Okay, the question. Caitlin? No, you can't. Still recording. You might have to turn that off. I don't know how to do it from here. By the way, we had to log you out because I did not, um, we had problems with that the email, so I'm not sure how to do it. You may have to log in. Do you, to, do you know how to record? Start the recording? Is, is oh, okay. What's that? Do you know how to start the recording? Uh, I know, but I can, uh, it's not here anymore. Like, it's not, like, see, there's no stop recording. It's like, try to do it. Uh, you can click these three dots right here. Oh, okay. Stop recording. Okay. <laughs> I need that. I need that. that um, yes, yeah, you were.